My name is Chris and I am the Environmental Maniac and we're going to look at some new insights on climate change. We're going to start off with greenhouse gas global cooling, greenhouse gas global warming, greenhouse gas climate change, and oh yeah, gloom and doom. In 1975, greenhouse gas global cooling was the problem, gloom and doom. In 2005, greenhouse gas global warming was the problem, gloom and doom. In 2008, it's greenhouse gas climate change. Now what does that mean? Oh yeah, gloom and doom. In 1450, the earth was flat, and the consensus of the politicians and scientists was that if you sailed out too far, gloom and doom. Pessimists have always spouted gloom and doom. And if you're not excited about the future, you're a pessimist. The problem with the UN climate model is the 800-pound gorilla sitting in the middle. Climate models can't model clouds. The UN IPCC report number one, page 114, states, it is somewhat unsettling that the results of a complex climate model can be so drastically altered by substituting one reasonable cloud parameterization for another, thereby approximately replicating the overall intermodel range of sensitivities. Let me simplify. They can't model clouds. And when you understand that 95% of all greenhouse gas is water vapor, and if you can't model clouds, what good is modeling the other 5%? Greenhouse gas global cooling ended when our planet started warming in 1976. No excitement. Greenhouse gas global warming ended in 2000, but the movement is trying to sell climate change. No excitement. Methane gas and the other Kyoto Treaty heavy carbon molecules used to be evil until they started declining in 2003. No explanation. Now, the only evil villain is CO2, no mention of methane. Do they hope we all forgot? There's no scientific support. Here's a missing piece to the puzzle. Greenhouse gas is not evenly distributed around the planet. All greenhouse gas is in the troposphere. The troposphere is 0 to 4 miles thick at the poles, 12 miles thick at the equator. During the summer, the oceans warm and they exhale greenhouse gas and the troposphere is 4 miles thick. During the winter, the oceans cool and they inhale greenhouse gas and the troposphere is indistinguishable at the poles. This cycle goes on every summer and every winter. Now all we have to do is expand upon that and add the sun and realize that when the sun belches, the oceans warm, they exhale greenhouse gas, and when the sun mellows, the oceans cool and they inhale greenhouse gas. Some reports say it's not the sun and they use pan evaporation for their evidence. Pan evaporation seems real scientific to me, how about you? And there have been millions and millions of dollars spent on researching solar dimming. Those theorists don't understand the cycles. The effect of the sun needs to be measured before greenhouse gases are created because the greenhouse gases are created by the oceans to protect the planet and reduce the impact of the sun. That also means that the polar ice caps are not melting because of greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases are the thinnest at the poles. The polar ice caps are melting probably because of sun activity. Somebody ought to check it out. It also means that the famous ice core samples are taken from where the greenhouse gases are the thinnest. During winter when they're even thinner. Comparing those to where the greenhouse gases are the thickest is an invalid comparison. We need to remember that gloom and doom will always be around us. Opportunists will always try to capitalize upon our fears. We need to remember to follow the money and make sure we listen to the people who walk the walk. Waste and pollution are never good. That includes wasting money trying to support politically correct bad theories. If you're new to the environmental movement, welcome. I started in 1972 when I was a senior at UC Irvine and greenhouse gas global cooling was the problem, so I built a car that met 1986 air pollution requirements. 1993-94, I created the best multifamily recycling program in the state of California. That one program has recycled enough newspaper and cardboard to save 50,000 trees. I just completed three years worth of research and development, reducing my air conditioning costs by over 50%. I live outside of Phoenix. That's a big number. I'm also saving 22 million BTUs of energy a year. That's equivalent of over four barrels of oil. Help another million of homes do exactly what I did, and there's four million barrels of oil just saved off of, off of another program. Listen, if you're going to get involved and make a difference, then one, you have to lead by actions, and two, you have to understand that if you're going to change human behavior, you've you got to answer the critical question. The critical question is, what's in it for me? Start thinking outside the box. Go get it done. Don't expect anyone else to get it done, and we can all make a difference.